Cirrus, Awakener of Worlds. As the main endgame boss in the Conquerors of the Atlas expansion, defeating this chaotic tornado boy can prove quite the challenge without proper knowledge of the fight. In this boss mechanics video, we will explore everything needed to tackle and defeat this ascended exile. Welcome! It's your friendly neighbourhood Badger here, and I'm back with a comprehensive boss guide to fighting Cirrus, Awakener of Worlds. Whether you're completely new to the fight, or whether you just want to get better at following his mechanics, this guide will help you accomplish that and more, giving you a greater understanding of everything involved with this boss. Right off the bat, I should mention that this video was made during the 3.10 Delirium patch, so if you're watching in 3.11 or later, there may be mechanics updates not accurately represented in this video. I'll keep the description updated with any changes. If you need any further help with questions, don't hesitate to come and say hi over at twitch.tv slash thisisbadgergaming. There's a clickable link in the description below. This guide will be split into two main parts, preparation and mechanics. Here's the handy colour bar if you needed. Without further ado, let's get into it. Cirrus is a boss who is best approached fully prepared, both with your gear and with your brain. Starting off, however, we will break down some of the benchmarks for characters. For ranged characters, including summoners, it's best if you stick to trying to obtain these stats. At least 4,500 effective life, 30% physical damage reduction, 30% block or dodge, all of your elemental resistances capped, and 0% chaos resistance or higher. For melee, it's best if you get at least 5,500 effective life, 40% physical damage reduction, 30% block or dodge, all elemental resistances capped, and 0% chaos resistance or higher. For health-based characters, you're going to want at least one instant life flask, preferably freeze immune, and one other life flask of your choosing, preferably ignite immune. You then want one basalt flask and two other flasks of your choosing, whether they be damage or support flasks. For energy shield or CI builds, a flask with freeze immunity is very important, and a flask with ignite immunity, then a basalt flask and two other flasks of your choosing. Due to the high elemental damage of Cirrus, which we will break down in detail in the mechanics section, elemental damage reduction through things such as Wise Oak is very helpful. Also, due to one specific mechanic applying corrupting blood stacks, it is vitally important to either have a jewel with the corrupted implicit corrupting blood cannot be inflicted on you, or a bleed immune flask. The former is the better option, because as you can see here, having only a bleed immune flask can leave you in some sticky situations. In terms of your damage, there's not really much to say other than if you have damage to kill the Conquerors, you have damage to kill Cirrus. It all comes down to knowing his mechanics, as knowledge of the fight is extremely important in determining the success or failure of this fight. Speaking of mechanics, let's get into that right now. To show you how possible this fight is with the knowledge needed, I have conducted it on a fresh semi-solo self-found character four days into a private league. I will be using Spellslinger plus Detonate Dead, and if you're interested in the scuffed paste bin, check out the description below. Also, I have a very detailed video on the mechanics of Detonate Dead in the description below as well. Check that out if you're interested. Initially as you enter the arena, there is a long-winded dialogue introduction of Cirrus and his madness. During this time, I like to do a final check to make sure all my flasks are in place, auras are turned on, and if I'm playing a minion build, have all of my relevant minions summoned. After the whining tornado boy has stopped talking, portals will open to allow you to follow Cirrus into the main boss arena. Entering, you will notice directly in front of you a large deatomization storm. These large circles are extremely dangerous to the average exile. They deal physical, fire, lightning, and chaos damage over time, but you want to avoid them directly unless your name is Cute Dog. I choose to move around this tornado to the right hand side, hugging the wall and moving slowly. As you approach Cirrus, he will begin to throw out abilities such as these Meteor Geysers which deal physical fire and lightning damage over time, or this Rapid Fire Laser ability, dealing the same but in bursts of small hits. As you approach him, he is invulnerable, but triggering his first vulnerable phase and subsequent phases are as simple as standing directly underneath his floating model. A voice line will trigger and Cirrus will begin to slowly lower. 
There are a few things that happen almost instantaneously as he becomes vulnerable. First, a large circle appears on the ground around you, dictating the arena in which you will fight Cirrus. If you exit this arena during any of his first three vulnerable phases, the phase will end and he will create a new de-atomization storm directly below him, delaying that phase until you reactivate him. Secondly, Cirrus will immediately turn in a random direction and dash away. Keeping track of him to begin with is important, and you will realize that this will be a recurring theme throughout the fight. He is easy to lose amongst all the particle effects everywhere, but there are telltale signs in the direction he is traveling. During this phase, Cirrus will rotate through different abilities, such as this first one here where he shoots a small simple beam at you dealing physical, fire and lightning damage. In almost all cases, these are usually fine to tank, but try not to get hit by too many in a row. I opt for a skill such as Flame Dash for instant avoiding. Also during this time, you may encounter Cirrus's projection firing off slow, telegraphed attacks. This first one, the Converging Beams, fires two beams that converge towards a point. This damages you with an even split of 25% physical, fire, lightning and chaos damage. The deadliest move of the fight is what is most commonly known as the Die Beam. Cirrus will exclaim, DIE! as he charges up and unleashes a very powerful beam that deals a random selection of one of the four damage types. Physical, which applies the corrupting blood, fire, which applies a large ignite, cold, which always freezes, and lightning, which applies a large shock debuff. It's best just to avoid this at all costs, which is easily done if you're constantly keeping an eye on him during the fight, staying close to him and circling around him. When Cirrus reaches 75% health, he triggers the second invulnerable phase, spawning a deatomization storm directly below him which pushes everyone away slowly. As he begins to do this, run directly left and hide with these small huts. During this time, Cirrus will slowly approach your direction, casting a shadow which is helpful to keep track of him with. After about 10 seconds or so, you can once again approach him, making sure he is well clear of the storm and standing directly underneath him to trigger the second vulnerable phase. Firstly, you will see Cirrus setting down these projection meteors, which hit initially with physical fire and lightning damage if you stand under them, and then triggers a debuff ground which applies desolation, shocking you, preventing recovery and reducing your max fire, lightning and chaos resistance by 10%. When seeing the glowing orange ground effects, your best option is to dash to the other side of the arena. These effects can kill extremely quickly. Unlike the first phase, the second phase has two new abilities Cirrus can trigger. The first one you see here is the Corridor Blast, in which he summons walls on either side of him, gaining extreme damage reduction and throwing large projectiles at you, alternating from right to left. To escape this move, counterintuitively dash directly towards Cirrus and past him. Once out of the corridor, the move will stop and you can continue to damage him. The second ability is the Maze Blast. Cirrus teleports you directly below him, creating impenetrable walls around him with only one small exit. You can actually quite easily determine where this exit is, as there will be glowing embers signifying the way out. Simply walk in the direction of these embers out of the maze and you will be safe. Once again, bringing Cirrus down another 25% health to 50% health, he will begin his third invulnerable phase. Rinse and repeat, head to the left and wait for Cirrus to approach. In the third vulnerable phase, the moves are identical apart from the maze. Instead of spawning one ring of walls, he spawns two. Don't fret though, you have plenty of time to follow the embers and make your way out if you're paying attention. Zipping through this phase, we end up at the fourth and final invulnerable phase, in which once again you will head to the left and wait for Cirrus. By this point, you should be quite near the stairs, preparing for the final and most devastating phase. As Cirrus lowers, the first thing you will notice is he does not dash away instantly like the other phases. Instead, he begins with some simple small beams. This is your chance during these first couple of seconds to get off as much damage as you can. After this, he will begin his rotation of spells, which are mostly quite different. After this, he will begin his rotation of spells, which are mostly quite different to his previous phase's spells. Keep in mind that whatever order he begins his spells during this phase, he will continue to rotate through these almost identically, the only exception being that his die beam can seemingly be performed at any point. Starting out, this Cirrus rotation performs his beam bomb, in which he will clone himself three times and form a diamond, with himself and each clone channeling beams to the center. You can tell which Cirrus is the correct one as he teleports, as he creates a small red glow, then also glows bright while beginning to cast the beam. Stand away from these beams, preferably directly behind Cirrus, but continue to damage him. This is a great time to be laying down the DPS. 
After a short delay, the center of this clone diamond will explode and spawn a counterclockwise rotating quad beam that applies debuffs, increasing damage taken by 10% and action speed by 6%, stacking up to eight times. Cirrus then moves into his clone phase, teleporting and creating many clones in a circle configuration. You can follow which of these many apparitions is the correct one by following the glowing trail, and if you pay close enough attention to the voice line, you can also gauge the direction in which he is. This is important to surviving the attack to come out of this. Cirrus will begin to say one of these three lines. On the last words of each sentence, he will fire a beam directly in your direction, dealing physical and lightning damage, and always shocking. Your best chance to avoid this skill is to track where Cirrus is and circle around him slowly. I do like to live dangerously, however, so I stay mostly in the center of the circle until he casts his spell and then dash directly behind him. The next spell this Cirrus casts is the Die Beam. This iteration of the last phase can also track your movement up to around a 45 degree angle, so be careful. Stick as close as you can to Cirrus's model and circle around him. Now, I did make a mistake in this fight, but it is a good example of what not paying attention and reading his moves can do. I thought I could focus him down after the previous spell, but he moved instantly into the die beam, meaning I got caught and destroyed. After each and every spell, always wait to see his next movement. Coming back into the fight in any stage can be dangerous. If you ever hear the die dialogue, die, dash or run directly perpendicular to the average direction of where you think Cirrus is, he can still off screen you. Get in close and personal once again and begin to whittle him down once more. Here, however, Cirrus pulled me into his maze, and on the last phase he spawns a total of three walls. Again, follow the embers and you'll be safe. Now we can see that he has rotated back around to the start of his abilities. Rinse and repeat, trying to avoid as much as you can damaging him down during the small grace periods between abilities. I'll let the rest of this fight play out so you can see a couple of close calls and the eventual taking down of Cirrus, Awakener of Worlds. The last tip I can really give you in this fight is to just stick as close to Cirrus as you possibly can do. The closer you are to Cirrus, the harder time he has to actually hit you with any of his abilities. The further you are away, the much harder it is to dodge his long range attacks, especially the die beam when it can move around. And there you have it. Hopefully this guide can help you become a master of the Cirrus fight. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. We are extremely close to 10,000 subscribers, so it would mean the world to me if you help me cross this substantial threshold. If you have any suggestions of any bosses you want me to tackle next, leave a comment below. I would love to hear your opinions. That's it from me. Until next time, Badger, out.